Yo, yo, yo. So welcome to Juniper, a house that's been a pain in my ass for over three years. I've only owned it for three months. How has this house been a pain in my ass for three years, you ask? Well, because I was a contractor before I was a full-time investor. There was a customer that calls me up. I shouldn't even call him a customer because he never paid his freaking bill. But this is what happens. Guy calls me up. He says, hey Pace, I hear you're a contractor. You solve a lot of problems. You're, you're, you're really, really good. I've got this property on Juniper that I hired a contractor to do the work for me. I, I'm flipping it and it's like maybe two weeks away from being done. I need you to come in and save this deal. I had to fire the contractor for being horrible at his job. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So I come over to this house three years ago. So the guy who did the tile, the guy who did the countertop, the gray cabinets, um, and a lot of the stuff that you already see in this property was another contractor. Now, what I was told when I came on the job is I was told that that contractor did such a bad job that that customer who ended up hiring me fired him and hired me to finish out the project. So we came in here and everything was wrong. Electrical, plumbing, all sorts of things were wrong. We spent two, three weeks fixing it and we threw it back on the market. The customer, I didn't throw it back on the market, the customer threw it on the market. Customer ended up selling it to the family that I ended up buying it from, subject to, okay? So what happens is the customer ends up not paying us. It was about a $17,000 bill. We had to come in here, fix all this other contractor stuff. And through the process of not getting paid, this is kind of a redemption story for me. So I, I actually care a, a lot about this house. So the redemption part of it is I lost $17,000 and in that process, I called the contractor before I was hired and I said, hey man, like something's really fishy. This guy t hired me, he told me you were a piece of crap. He's like, that guy told you I was a piece of crap? That guy owes me $40,000. I walked off the project, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, wow. I learned in that moment three years ago, unfortunately it took me all the way into my 30s to not believe everything that people tell you. And this guy got me involved in this property, re refused to pay the $17,000 and I stupidly, so a lot of people watching this video go, why didn't you put a lien on the property? Guys, in the state of Arizona, you have to do a pre-lien before you do a lien. That pre-lien says, hey customer, I have the right to put a lien on the property at a later date if you don't pay me. However, if you don't put a pre-lien and then you start doing work, you can't go and put a lien on the property. There's a process you have to follow. I never put a pre-lien on the property because I trusted the guy was gonna pay me. So he ends up stiffing me over $17,000, which is not worth going and suing somebody over because I probably would have spent $10,000 in legal fees in a year of my life to get 17 grand. So I just let it go, I walked away, obviously took three, four months of me just being pissed off about it. And then boom, my door knocking team knocks this door, sellers in foreclosure, okay? Seller buys the property three years ago, there's not enough equity in the property after three years to sell the property on the market. So my team knocks the door because, you know, we have an app that shows you where all the foreclosures are. And we end up getting the seller in the contract. It was too skinny and I really didn't want the house specifically. I never came to the house. I literally never came to the house until about a week ago. This is what we did. We bought it subject to, we took escrow, we painted the house white and we threw it back on the market. We call that a sub tail strategy. So buying it subject to, taking it retail, not buying and holding it. I didn't want to buy and hold this house specifically, just didn't cash flow properly but we saw the opportunity of making some money on this deal, okay? Hmm. Hold on. All right, bye-bye. So what happens is we ended, up, we ended up seeing that we could flip it really quick and throw it back on the market. So guess how much money I'm walking away with net, net, net on this property? $17,500. $17, <laughs> So we're walking, we're walking away $17,500 on my HUD or my settlement statement. It shows that I'm making $21,000, but that's gross. I had about $4,000, $3,500, $3,800 in cost. So after everything's said and done, 
my total net is $17,500. So I redeemed the 17 grand I lost on this piece of shit three years ago back in buying it subject to and putting on the market. How did I find out that this was the house? Well, um, when we threw it on the market, we get a buyer. The buyer comes and they ask for a list of repairs. My wife, who's our real estate agent, my partner and Anna, who manages our construction says, hey, the, the repairs are a little bit tricky. Do you mind going over there and walking the property and kind of figuring out if we want to say yes or no to the, the repair ask or the repair request from the buyer? I walk up to the property and I'm like, oh no, I know this house, I know this house. I go through and yep, sure enough, it's the house that we worked on three years ago. We never got paid on and here we are redeeming our 17,000. So it took me basically three years to make $500, but here's the reality. We took a house that nobody else could get done that didn't have equity. We threw paint on it, didn't have enough equity, I should say. We didn't have enough paint or didn't have enough equity on the deal to buy it and fix and flip it with traditional means. So we told the seller, if you give us your mortgage, we can turn around and put it back on the market. So we had to catch up their arrears, give this seller a couple thousand dollars, pay closing costs. We became the owners of the property. And then we threw it right back on the property after we put about $2,500 in cost into the deal, paint and a little bit of cleaning. So even the carpet, I remember, this is what's so funny. I remember this contractor when I was here, the contractor ordered his own, or not the contractor, the customer who hired us to finish the property, he ordered the carpet himself. He was such a damn cheapskate that he ran out of carpet. And when Bobby's doing B-roll, Bobby's gonna notice that there's a couple of rooms with different colored carpet because the guy was such a damn cheapskate, which is so funny because he never paid 40 grand to one contractor, didn't pay me 17 grand. So $57,000 remodel, the guy never had to pay any money towards and he was still penny pitching all the way through. Total piece of crap. Anyway, so here we are. We bought the house subject to, threw it right back on the market. We ended up making $17,500 and something dollars net after all costs and expenses. And we utilized subject to in order to do that. I wouldn't have been able to do that and make money, at least guaranteed money, if I got a hard money loan. If I, even if I went and got a conventional loan, because it would have taken too much time and it would have required cash down and all that kind of stuff. So boom, here we are. This house uh, is set to close Tuesday of this coming week. I'll get my check. I'm going to freaking print that out. And I'm going to send a picture of that check to that douchebag that screwed me over at $17,000 to say, I got my money back. Thank you so much. Thank you for nothing. Basically. I don't know how I'm going to frame it yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to think of something really good. So um, let's go through the property just real quick. Um, we really didn't have to do much. I mean, the, the good thing is this house was already renovated. Um, I mean, the carpet was already here. The outlets had already been replaced. The house was basically just needed a new paint job because, um, you know, after three or four years, the person who lived in the property, after three or four years, they kind of beat it up that, you know, you can see that they were, must have had like a wheelchair or something grinding up against the baseboard, those kind of things. But all we did was come back in here and paint it. That's it. That's, that's all we did was paint this house and, and, and uh, we were done. So the repairs that the seller asked for, or I'm sorry, the buyer asked for, the repairs are, they were pretty intense actually. There was a bullet hole, bullet hole. So the, the guy who sold the house to us was shooting his gun through the roof. So he's laying it in his bed and he's shooting up through the master bedroom. So there was holes and the master bedroom ceiling, but we just thought, okay, this guy's trying to look for a stud or something. And it turns out he was laying on his bed shooting bullet holes through the ceiling. How do we know? Because the, bullet, the bullets were shooting up through the roof as well and penetrating the roof all. So it was going through the drywall and through the ceiling. Guys just, people are freaking crazy, dude. So we had to repair bullet holes in the, the roof. Um, there's a handful of little things we had to do on the repairs, like the cellar, you can see here, the drainage for the roof is two different colors here. The, the buyer wanted us to add an extra uh, drain for the rain. And that was that. And then we had to do a new pool pump. Outside of that, that was basically it. Very, very simple when we were done with the house. So this is a house that, again, when you buy houses subject to, you don't always have to have, um, you don't have to buy and hold them. 
you can turn around and throw them back on the market. This is again what we call a sub tail strategy, buying it subject to, throwing it on the retail market and keeping the seller's loan in place, which helps me not have to go get a hard money loan or bring cash to the table of my own in order to throw it back on the market. So pretty cool little strategy with no money out of our own pocket. We were able to make $17,500 on a quick little flip that literally just required us to put some paint on the house. And um, it's interesting. I know this is me getting long winded, but it's interesting. Last night I was talking to Jesse Braille from Batch Skip Tracing, he calls me up. We were on the phone for an hour and 10 minutes and we were talking about how there's a handful of wholesalers getting out of the business because the whole COVID-19 thing is pushing people into times of uncertainty. And so they're shutting down and letting go of a bunch of employees. And on my side, because we understand all the strategies um, beyond re listing a house, beyond wholesaling a house, behind buying a house and fixing and flipping it, subject to seller finance, novation agreements. Um, you've got purchasing on a lease option, which we bought a house last week on a lease option. There's so many different strategies to utilize in real estate that all we're doing is adapting, right? So instead of me buying and holding this property, threw it right back on the market and made that $17,000. That's something that other wholesalers aren't doing. In fact, the seller that we talked to told my door knocker flat out, you can't buy my house. There's not enough equity. We've already met with other investors. We've already met with real estate agents. We don't have enough equity in this house. And it's in a condition where it needs to be painted, needs a handful of repairs, and nobody's going to buy it. So we're just letting the house go to the bank. We came in cleaned it up, threw it on the market at a higher rate, obviously, because we cleaned it up and we made $17,000. So a wholesaler couldn't do this. A real estate agent couldn't do this. Why is it that I know how to do this and still make as much money as I could have on another deal on an assignment? So you're going to convert at a higher rate when you know these strategies. Again, this strategy is subtail. People have been doing this for 30, 40 years. They just very rarely talk about it because they don't want a lot of competition in the space. Forever, you know, yeah, this right